pandemic unlike anything we have ever known. This crisis leaves us feeling defenseless and overwhelmed. Let's face it, immune health is not typically on the top of our list for discussion, right? But now it is. Now is the time to look at what boosts and what suppresses the immune system. Welcome to Healthy Harmony, where we help you clarify and discuss health tactics to harmonize your life. I am your host and health coach, Jennifer Pickett, and today we are talking all things immune function. Ready to feel empowered? Let's do this. Let's be honest. Most of the time, we are simply too busy to think about body function and our immune system. We have lots to do and little time to get it all done. So we fly through each day. Until something slows us down, enough to make us think, something that makes us reevaluate everything. The human body is pretty spectacular when you get right down to it, and it is absolutely amazing in its efficiency, function, and organization. And it is something that we certainly take for granted until something goes wrong. So today we're looking specifically at how our body fights illness. We're looking at our immune function, our body's natural army with an incredible defense system. This is, of course, a very timely topic with the pandemic that we're in. But let me emphasize that this is a topic that needs to be at the top of our list always. As a health coach and dietitian, I often hear my clients say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you know what? There was certainly a time in my life where I could relate to that statement. Over 20 years ago, when I moved to Texas, I was hit with an onslaught of allergies, unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. It was like a crazy welcome gift of some sort. (laughs) My typical course, as I settled into the busy Texas life, would be suffering with allergies, and then it would develop into a sinus infection, and then I would take a course of antibiotics. I'd get about, uh, I don't know, two to three weeks of relief, then it would start up all over again. It was awful. I never really felt good and I didn't know what to do about it. Fast forward many years and after losing my sweet mom and being consumed with not just grief but anxiety over my tremendous family medical history, I determined to be more proactive with my health and kick things up a notch. I started focusing on gut health. Yep, that's the health of your GI system. One of my tremendous benefits of me doing that was I started to see relief from my allergies and I stopped getting sick all the time. It was absolutely shocking to me. So being the geek that I am, it really made me do some research into gut health and immunity and that is what we're talking about today. You know they say not all heroes wear capes. And no place is that more true than when it comes to your immune system. This unassuming defender acts in the background of your body, taking care of potential issues before they get out of hand and often goes unnoticed until something goes dramatically wrong. But it plays such a key role in keeping you well. So speaking of gut health and immune function, hey, let's look at how those tie together. So first of all, you need to know that 75% of your immune function comes from the health of your gut. Yes, this is your entire gastrointestinal system, your GI system, and it is home to trillions of microorganisms, bacteria, protozoa, etc. For your gut to be healthy, it needs to be about 80% good, healthy bacteria, good, healthy organisms, 20% bad organisms like fungus and yeast and protozoa. The problem is that in most people, this is totally and completely reversed. Why is this? We have an overabundance of the bad guys, not 
enough of the good guys. This is because of the foods that we eat and the overuse of antibiotics and steroids and other drugs. So if the problem is an overabundance of the bad and not enough of the good, let's look at that a little bit further. First of all, I want you to know that the good guys, that good, healthy bacteria, that's like your army. It fights for you and it fights for your health. And it is absolutely astounding how effective how efficient and how effective your immune function can be. So as they say, not all heroes wear capes. We're going to be talking about the heroes of your immune system. So let's look at what boosts the immune system and what suppresses the immune system. Okay, I'll start with an unexpected one. Sleep. Think of sleep as that time when your body literally cleans house. And I'm talking about a deep cleaning, like flipping open the sofa and vacuuming underneath. When your body sleeps, it is its only chance to reset and restore. It is so very rejuvenating. This is when your body, like I said, cleans house. Did you know that recently the World Health Organization listed sleep deprivation as a carcinogen? Oh my goodness. Y'all, a carcinogen is something that can cause cancer. Does that get your attention? This is because of what a lack of sleep does to the immune function. It suppresses the immune system. Research shows that it can decrease the natural killer cells by up to 70%. And we know that it truly affects your gut by decreasing the amount of the good guys, that good, healthy bacteria. So, if you want to increase your immunity and help your body fight, get good quality sleep. Adults need seven to nine hours at night. Practice good sleep hygiene and maintain consistent sleep hours. And I know right now that's even tougher to do because we're out of our rhythm, we're out of our routine, but it's absolutely imperative to turn off those screens, make sure your room is cool, quiet, and dark, and you might even want to set a reminder to help yourself go to bed on time. Try to wake up at the same time every morning and go to bed at the same time every morning. It makes a big difference. So if you want to hear a little bit more about the details of sleep and how important that is, then why don't you head to my podcast that I specifically did on sleep. I think you'll enjoy it. So here's another largely unexpected concern that has a dramatic effect on your overall immune health, and that is stress. Stress can suppress your body's immunity by decreasing the body's lymphocytes. These are those white blood cells that fight off infection. The lower your lymphocytes, the more susceptible you are. So we know that chronic stress also keeps the levels of the stress hormone called cortisol jacked up, and this leads to inflammation. Let me tell you, elevated inflammation is an absolute disaster in the body. Inflammation is the number one driver of most of our diseases. And by the way, this might get your attention, inflammation and weight gain go hand in hand. Now, this is a horribly stressful time. I don't want to diminish that in any way. However, it's so important that we attempt to manage the stress and control what we can control and monitor our response. For me personally, I need to limit social media and the news. It stresses me out. It makes me anxious. And I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. Secondly, we need to recognize how our body responds to stress. How does your body respond when you're stressed out? Do you get a headache or feel lightheaded? Are you tensing your shoulders or clenching your jaw? What about your breath? Most of the times when we're stressed, we take these short, shallow breaths. And that means our brain is not getting the sufficient oxygen that it needs. So how about some tips to help the body dial back the stress response? It really does start with recognizing when you're stressed, how your body's responding, and then seeing the need to take a quick break. What can you do to help the body dial back that stress response? 
something that is immensely therapeutic is doing some deep cleansing breaths. I recommend something called four square breathing. Now, outside of just really intentional breathing, which is deep breaths in and deep breaths out, this four square breathing is super easy. So imagine a square. Breathe in and count to four. Hold it, count to four. Breathe out, count to four, and hold it, count to four. This is called four square breathing, and it is amazing how beneficial it is in helping the body just calm down and dial back that stress response. I want to encourage all of us, we need to get up and move. Any type of movement is beneficial. So even if you've got a long day um, and you're at home and you're trying to get your work done, even getting up and doing some stretches, moving around can make you feel a lot better. But of course, we still need to get that movement in the form of exercise. This is a great time to maybe try something you haven't tried before at home. Remember, all movement counts. It doesn't have to be an intense hour-long sweat session. Even a 15-minute yoga could be hugely beneficial. Doing some jumping jacks in place. If you've got some hand weights, maybe working out with those. Finding a way to move your body and work up a sweat will help you manage that sweat, that stress. One thing that I really like to do is make sure I start my morning well so that I can manage that incoming stress. For me, this is spending that quiet time with God and reading in the Bible and my devotional and journaling. This makes a really big difference with me. But I've started to recognize that even throughout the day, as I get stressed out and overwhelmed, and it's so easy right now, that I need to maybe read something encouraging or inspirational, even a motivational quote can kind of shift my thinking real quick. Another thing that's hugely beneficial is to watch or listen to something funny. Yes, I said that. Listen to something funny. Watch something funny. This is an amazing benefit um, when it comes to managing that stress and helping your body dial it back. Have you heard that one minute of anger weakens the immune system for four to five hours? And one minute of laughter boost the immune system for 24 hours. Right now, we need all the help we can get to boost our body's immune system. So when I saw this interesting stat, it got my attention right away. So, okay, I know some of you are a little bit like me and you're like, okay, where's the science behind that? So here it is. Laughing causes a powerful pump from your diaphragm to your lymphatic circulation. This helps the lymphatic vessels carry fluids throughout your body. And it helps those lymph nodes to clean and filter that fluid and remove waste products, dead cells, and even unwanted microorganisms. Bottom line is increased lymphatic flow equals improved immune function. So there you go. There is no denying the fact that this is a really tough time. Laughter may be the last thing on our mind, but the science clearly shows that laughter can truly do the body good. Okay, Neil, here's what you've been waiting for. Food, right? It's at the top of all of our minds. We're stuck at home, and the question from our kids is always, what's to eat? Okay, let's talk food. Lord have mercy, we are stuck at home, so everything is different. But I want to emphasize this can be a very powerful time for us. So first of all, remember that food serves many different purposes. Number one, food is fuel. It gives your body the essential energy that it needs to operate, just like you put gas in your car. But we also know that food is information. It tells the body what to do. So the question is, what kind of information are you putting in your body? Food is also connection. And this is a component that we're kind of missing right now outside of our family circles. We're used to going to restaurants and meeting friends and family members for um, to, to eat and to dine and enjoy. 
we're missing that right now. So food is connection. So I love seeing how families are doing like theme nights and getting creative with what they're fixing at home. And we also have to remember, food is medicine. Don't misunderstand. Food is not like medicine. Food is medicine. It can heal us. So we're going to talk about some foods today that have those healing properties. So my general advice is always this. Stick to real whole foods. Those foods that you can easily identify and really limit the processed, chemical-laden foods that cause toxicity in the body. When we talk immunity, we want to specifically look at what foods suppress immune function and what foods boost the immune function. So let's look at what suppresses the immune function first. Fast food. Now, it's always a tendency, especially when we're really busy and we're just kind of used to this, We love fast food, right? We live in a crazy busy society and we're looking for convenience. But research shows that eating fast food on a regular basis really reprograms the way our immune system reacts to potential issues. It puts it in a prolonged state of high alert. It's that sugar, salt, fat combination that's not just highly addictive, but it wrecks havoc on our health, especially our immune health. The next one is foods with MSG. MSG is a flavor shortcut. It stands for monosodium glutamate, and it looks like it has some pretty harsh ingredients on your immune system. Studies indicate that eating foods containing MSG can cause unwanted changes to your thymus and your spleen. Both of these guys are key players in your immune function. Your Thymus and your spleen create lymphocytes. These guys take out foreign invaders. And your spleen also makes antibodies that keep you well. And let's face it, it is not just MSG. All of those processed foods are loaded with toxic chemicals, preservatives, artificial sweeteners, flavors, and just junk. This creates toxicity in the body because it is foreign and not easily recognized. The result is a body that is sluggish, burdened, toxic, and overwhelmed. This is a body with an immune system that is designed to fight, but it doesn't have the power to do so. What's next on this list? Here's a sensitive topic, alcoholic beverages. And this is something that we may be turning to right now to kind of numb the pain. Um, But guys, I'm going to tell you, it is amazing what happens to your immune system. It is amazing what happens to your immune system when you drink alcohol. Have you ever noticed that it seems to be easier to pick up a bug if you've been drinking a little more than usual? You know what? It's not all in your head. So alcohol has a couple effects on your immune system that you could definitely do without, including reducing the function of your macrophages. Those are those cells that break down foreign invaders. And it also messes with your immunoglobulin and cytokine levels and impairs the production of T cells and B cells. These guys act like first responders in the body. So not just yet, not just that, but we know that alcohol really impairs your body's ability to reset and restore when you're getting sleep. Your body's not getting that good, deep, restorative sleep. So although this might be a tendency for us to turn to alcohol as a means to deal with the stress and numb the pain, it is having a dramatic effect on our immune system. Okay, what's another one? I can almost feel myself growing in unpopularity as I point some of these things out. But these are some of these things that we want to keep in mind if we're looking at, okay, am I going to boost my immune system or suppress my immune system? Next on the list, and it's no surprise here, and that's sugar. Sugary foods, sugary snacks. So it's no surprise that sugar is on this list. Unwanted strains of bacteria positively thrive on sugar. Those bad guys, like the fungus and the yeast, they feed off of sugar. So what you have here is a wonderful example of 
an enemy being in overabundance and the good guys being in short supply. So what happens is that um, the unwanted strains of bacteria really thrive on the sugar. The more they have to feed on, the faster they grow, and then that allows them to crowd out the beneficial, the beneficial bacteria, the good guys. So since your bacterial good guys are responsible for a whole host of health promoting functions in the body, this awful imbalance has a really negative effect on everything, your mood, your blood sugar, but also your immune function. Okay, here's something else that's really interesting. Sugar also impacts your immune system by competing for space with vitamin C. This is a core ingredient, a core nutrient for your immune cells. The more sugar in your system, the harder it is for your immune cells to get the vitamin C that they need to function. Have you heard this quote? Every time you eat or drink, you are either feeding disease or fighting disease. That quote is attributed to a lady by the name of Heather Morgan. But I want us to keep that quote in mind. Are you feeding disease or are you fighting disease? So enough of what suppresses the immune system. I want you to feel equipped and empowered with what you can eat to boost your body's immune system. That inner army needs to be in prime fighting condition. So are you ready? Let's go. First of all, eat the rainbow. Nope, I'm not talking about Skittles. I'm talking about a gorgeous variety of brightly colored fruits and vegetables. All of the beautiful colors in our produce represent powerful antioxidants, potent phytonutrients, robust vitamins, and mighty minerals. Our focus needs to be on getting in an abundance of fruits and vegetables. For most of us, let's be honest, this is a shift. Our focus may be on convenience or our focus may be on the meat or the protein on the plate. So this definitely requires a shift in our thinking. And nowadays, with the stay-in-place orders, we are very much limited to how often we can go to the grocery store and get fresh fruit, fresh food, excuse me, but I want you to feel equipped. If there is any way you can get your hands on fresh produce, then do it. Don't know how to, don't know how to prepare it? Look it up online. Be empowered. Try something new. You may also enjoy some of my cooking videos. Hey, these are not for cooking experts. It is for real people, and those come out every single Friday. And you know what? If not fresh, frozen is an excellent option as well. So eat the rainbow and get that gorgeous variety of brightly colored fruits and vegetables. So let's talk some specifics. First up is vitamin C. Vitamin C has had a long time reputation of being an immune booster and it is high time to take advantage. Vitamin C is thought to increase the production of white blood cells. Of course, our first thought is citrus fruits contain vitamin C, right? I mean, I think everybody knows oranges have vitamin C, and they're certainly a good source, but not nearly as good as guava, bell peppers, papaya, and kiwi. Also on this powerful vitamin C list is broccoli, strawberries, kale, tomatoes, and snow peas. Let's talk zinc. This essential mineral is getting a lot of attention with the coronavirus scare. We know zinc helps to build a healthy immune system and it assists in building proteins, triggering enzymes, and creating DNA. You get zinc from meat, shellfish, legumes like chickpeas, and nuts and seeds. I saw a awesome recommendation to roast chickpeas and use those as a crunchy topping for salad. So I'm trying that this week. Let's talk vitamin D. Vitamin D is known as the sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D plays a crucial role in our immune health. And the reality is that most of us are vitamin D deficient. So let's encourage each other. Get some sunshine and fresh air if at all 
possible and realize that most holistic health experts recommend supplementation with vitamin D year round. But to really increase that dose during very difficult seasons like this and during cold and flu seasons. What about vitamin B6? Vitamin B6 is responsible for many things, but in particular to immune health is the formation of new and healthy red blood cells. Have you heard of bone broth? That might be something you want to check out to make sure you're getting some gut health benefits and getting some crucial vitamin B6. Now I want to give you a list of some powerful foods and beverages that can have a big impact on your immune function. Let's start off with broccoli. Broccoli is long touted as a superfood. It contains fiber and the supercharged vitamins of A, C, and E. I love vitamin, I love broccoli and um, the benefits that it contains and I like to roast it in the oven. What about garlic? Not only does it make your food incredibly flavorful, but it contains immune-boosting properties. These come from a heavy concentration of sulfur-containing compounds called allicin. Next on the list is ginger. Ginger is a great addition to freshly squeezed juices and smoothies or used when cooking, and it delivers a powerful punch by decreasing inflammation. How about turmeric? Turmeric is this ancient gold color spice that seems to be all the rage now. So what you're hearing is true. It is a powerful punch, really supports the immune system by being very effective, a very effective and efficient anti-inflammatory. Number five on the list is green tea. This doozy of a beverage has many health benefits. Green tea contains flavonoids. This is an antioxidant. And it also contains a compound called EGCG. This is a powerful compound that enhances immune function. Another mighty ingredient in green tea is L-theanine. One of the things this ingredient does is it, produ- it assists in the production of germ-fighting compounds in T-cells. Last on the list is fermented foods and beverages. Foods and beverages that are fermented contain probiotics. These are live organisms, bacteria that help your body fight. Examples include kombucha, kefir, sauerkraut, miso. Keep in mind, yogurt also contains probiotics, but you want to be cautious with a lot of the popular brands out there because of the tremendous amount of added sugar or artificial sweeteners and artificial flavors. Now, that's a lot of information that I've given you. But my goal is for you to listen to this and feel empowered and not overwhelmed. I know I'm certainly having my days of overwhelm lately. Please know that you are not alone in those feelings. And you know what? Some days it's okay to not be okay. But I'm also here to remind you that there are some things that we can control. There are ways to boost your immune system so you're in the best fighting shape possible. And not just for right now during this pandemic, but for the rest of your life. We never want our lives to be dictated by illness or disease. So we must take our health into our own hands and give our body what it needs. I encourage you to please follow all the recommendations set out by the CDC and the World Health Organization. Take the precautions necessary for your family's safety and well-being. This pandemic will not last forever. Use this time to equip yourself, your health, specifically your immune function. Knowledge followed by action is key. So what is one or two small changes that you can make this week to boost your immune function? Knowledge followed by action is key. What is one or two small changes that you can make this week to boost 
your immune function. Thank you for joining me today. I would love to hear from you. What are you currently doing to boost your immune system? All of this information we have covered today, it is not an inclusive list. There are many more things that can benefit your immune health that we simply did not have time to cover. I would love to hear what you're doing. And please know that my thoughts and prayers are with you and your family during this tragic time. If you need support or encouragement, please reach out. You are not alone. As always, you can connect with us on your favorite platform of choice on Facebook or Instagram at Inspire Healthy Harmony. And also check out other resources available to you on InspireHealthyHarmony.com. So until we meet again, my heart and my prayers are with you. Have a healthy and happy day.